Hi, everybody. Welcome to Let's Talk TEFL. This is episode one. My name is Jackie Bolin, and joining me is... I'm Jennifer Smith. We're going to talk everything TEFL, ESL, EFL teaching. Um, so our vision is to have um, lots of teaching tips. So we'll talk about different activities and games you can use in the class. Um, we'd love to interview all of our old friends who are teaching in various places around the world. Um, yeah, we'll see where it takes us. So this episode, I'm going to interview Jennifer about her experiences teaching um, mostly in Korea. I think I'm not sure if you taught other places too, but about Korea for sure. Um, Jennifer, how did you get into um, teaching? English? Well, I think like a lot of teachers in Korea, I sort of fell into it backwards. I um, actually came into it because of the Korea connection. I had been a Korean linguist in the military, but I was never stationed in Korea. So I wanted to go to Korea and the easiest way to go to Korea at that time and earn money because I'm independently wealthy was uh, as a teacher. So I, I went on the promise of uh, full training, which was a complete lie in <laughs> yes. every sense of the word. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time on researching, you know, teaching techniques and classroom activities and classroom management. And uh, I co-teesaw, which was an amazing organization. It still is an amazing organization, I'm sure. I'm just not there anymore to benefit from it. But uh, I learned so much from my participation in Cotisol and uh, eventually got my master's in education. And so that's quite interesting that you um, knew Korean obviously quite well before coming to Korea. That's very unlike most English teachers who know maybe like <laughs> A couple words at maximum, I think, would be the most that teachers would know. Um, did that help you in your teaching experiences or fitting into like school life with Korean teachers? Or It helped me so much. And I will say very clearly, my Korean was mediocre at the best of times. But um, the Korean co-workers that I had really did not speak English. They all had degrees in English, but they had all the English through Korean. I don't think they had ever had to actually speak Korean, or sorry, speak English uh, to complete their degrees. So we would just converse in Korean and they would give me any sort of direction in Korean. And that was just it. So um, what ages yeah. did you teach or what kind of schools did you uh, teach at during your time? There? Um, well, I taught at a variety of schools and I taught all ages from kindergarten to I spent a semester as a teacher trainer. And I, <clears throat> excuse me, I also spent about a year uh, teaching adults, like business people going to offices and doing like group classes for, you know, pharmaceutical salesmen and, you know, that sort of thing. So I really uh, spread the gamut of classrooms, but mainly I taught elementary school and upper elementary was really my favorite age group for so many reasons. Oh, <laughs> and what, I are, think what, what are businessmen were my least. <laughs> the least. And, so, and so why did you like, um, I think like in Korea that would be like grade five or grade six or something. Uh, so, and so why did you um, three, like Three, four, so and five. Oh, okay. Yeah, three, four, and five were my favorite. Um, old enough to have personalities and be fun to talk to but not so old that they would really give you a lot of attitude. <laughs> yeah, grade six in Korea. I don't know if it's like around the world, but my experience is teaching um, kids. I, I taught mostly in universities during my time there, but I did teach kids for a couple of years. Um, grade six, I don't know. They were the ones that caused me the most grief out of like any, yeah. any grade. I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was tough, really, sure. um, yeah, I think it was, like they underwent some sort of metamorphosis between grade five and six. And they went from being great students to teach to no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then by the time they got to like grade eight or grade nine, they were like normal again. I don't know. I'm not sure. I guess puberty, puberty happens in that period in a big yeah, way. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and so did you teach um, at Hogwans or like public schools or, or what kind of institutions were you, were you at? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Um, I, the job I had, the job I had the longest was at a Hagwon for 
returnees. So kids who had lived in an English speaking country and gone to school uh, in English period of time. And so we just used American textbooks and they worked at grade level. Um, and I also spent several years teaching at uh, an immersion elementary school. So the kids had half a day of Korean instruction and half a day of English instruction. And that was really good too. That sounds amazing. That's kind of different than most um, English teachers in Korea at kind of Hogwan style places. Generally, um, you would teach after school programs. So you'd see the kids maybe for like 45 minutes or an hour, like three days a week or something like that. But um, yeah, your experience yes. sounds more interesting. Exactly. You could actually get to know the kids and they were actually obviously quite good <laughs> at English. You could like talk to them, talk, talk <laughs> to them. And so yeah, like, yeah, Hi, how regular. are you? How's the weather? Yeah. Some of the things you like <laughs> yes. really liked yes. about uh, Korea and teaching, <laughs> teaching there. <laughs> I really liked it because um, for one thing, I know a lot of teachers in the U.S., like a lot of um, friends from home. I have a lot of relatives who are teachers. And my situation was always better than their situation. <laughs> Whenever I would complain about report cards or um, marking or whatever, I would never complain to them <laughs> because <laughs> whatever I had to do, like they had to do like tenfold, you know, my I have a twin sister. Oh, fun fact, both of us have twin sisters. Yes, <laughs> um, I have a twin too. And, twin sister... and my mom is a twin as well, which is another fun Ooh. fact. We're all identical. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah, we're fraternal. Ah. Oh, well, you, you definitely win, win the twin <laughs> war there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Take my brownie point for the day. Um, yeah, my, my twin sister was a, a high school special ed teacher and the amount of paperwork that she had to do was so insane. And she had two planning hours to help offset it. But all that really happened was everybody would say, well, she's got two hours, so she should do this extra thing you know like if a teacher called in sick you know they would just have her come in and teach you know during her planning period and you know sort of steal people's planning periods and have them teach rather than get a sub in or something uh, so that would be tough yeah. to keep doing she that had. job year after year if that was the situation I think indeed and um not very surprisingly she is now teaching online. She teaches high school online now. Hmm. So yeah, she, I think she had enough of all the rules and regulations and everything changing on a dime last year's yeah. um, legal requirements. And these are this year's requirements and you have to learn everything from scratch all over again. And yeah, oh, that's tough. And so uh, what about like living in Korea and the culture and the food and all that kind of stuff? Like what, like what, what things did you love um, about that? This is going to sound so lame, but I really liked sort of the long-term student aspect of this term and they're like, here's your place to live and it's furnished. And, you know, you don't have to worry about getting utilities hooked up and you don't have to worry about, you know, normal homeowner stuff hmm. and so it was kind of like still being a student for 15 years <laughs> I agree I love, on the other love hand that. if you yeah especially now that um I am a homeowner and I we have had so we had we have a house and um several years ago, my sister-in-law was living in it and there was a house fire. And we are now in the third year of renovations and it is still not finished. And we have had workers <laughs> in the house pretty much that whole time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if there was a fire ended. in Korea, you just would have moved <laughs> somewhere else. Yes, and school like would have organized it. <laughs> yeah, the, the building would have been demolished and that would have yeah. just been that. <laughs> My my very last um, teaching contract that I did in Korea, I worked for yeah, almost five years at this university. They just gave a housing allowance, so I had to organize my own um, housing. So I lived in two different places during that time. 
and it was stressful I just was like oh my god this is really crazy trying to communicate with <laughs> landlords and get things hooked up and I spoke like okay Korean but obviously I had no vocabulary related to like rental housing and contracts <laughs> like right so I yeah. had to like hire somebody and I like was like oh do I trust him and I, yeah it was it was a stressful experience for sure so yeah I did appreciate that aspect of um of someone just you know taking care of all the things for me and I was like why don't I have gas like what's going on right now or like right. <laughs> my fridge just broke like what yeah. how do I get someone to take it away like I don't even know um yeah so it was kind of a lot for sure but um yeah yeah, yeah. that it definitely helped have a friendly relationship with your school admin staff because if they liked you, they would be so much more woo. Like if you went into work and were like, oh, my refrigerator broke, like they would be more inclined to offer, you know, to get a repairman over or to have the little guy with the bongo truck show up yeah. and part it away for you. <laughs> um, but if they would just never offer to do anything and to the point that if it was something that really needed help with it would just be like that's not my job <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, for sure so, so uh, if you're going to be teaching overseas and you don't speak the language be as friendly as possible to the admin staff because chances are they are overworked and underpaid and mm. it really is not their job to sort your life out for you but mm. If you're nice to them, they will probably help you out. Oh, I actually became friends with all the department secretaries. Um, called I think it's called Chogio. <laughs> I still remember, and it's like I would always take them out for lunch, and if I was having a party, I would invite them. And like one of them actually came to visit me in Canada a couple of years ago. So yeah, I made like a serious oh, effort wow. to like cultivate like good relationships with them, and um, yeah, so it actually worked out well. Like they were just were happy I think to have a friend and then I was happy to have like someone who just was like willing willing to like you know just be helpful <laughs> for um things I needed but I also tried not to burden yes. them with like ridiculous things I only was like okay so if I have an emergency I'm gonna call them but everything else I'm gonna like figure it out on my own so I think they appreciated that too I wasn't like yeah yeah for sure. I definitely knew things. people who yeah, yeah, because there definitely were, are there, I'm sure they are, still are, people who would think nothing of asking somebody in the office to walk with them to the post office, so they didn't have to ask how to send a package home, oh. you know, something like that, because I, I did know people who really um, are hand and uh, really expected the admin staff to do all of that hand-holding. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think teaching in a foreign country, if you don't speak the language, you definitely need some like level of, I don't know, just like, you have to be a little bit brave, I guess, and um, <clears throat> like willing to be self-sufficient yes. and just trying to figure stuff out on your own, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely always try to figure out stuff on your own. But also, like you say, uh, you know, cultivate those good relationships with people. You know, I mean, I don't mean like be fake or something like make them think that you're total BFFs when you never think about them outside of work you know nothing you know disingenuous like that just you know be friendly and only hassle them when your life <laughs> depends on it yeah, exactly in, well in Korea it's like my students would always bring bring me coffees or like little snacks and they just did like cute things for me and so um I kind of I thought like oh that's what people do in Korea for people they like like or just want to have a friendly relationship with they just bring them small things so I kind of just took that and like did that for the department secretaries and was just like okay well I need something from them but I'll bring them like a little snack and like yes. they'll have some goodwill towards me to help me because I like did you know something kind for them yeah. so it, it goes it has to go two ways for sure I think yes thing. and that that is a very good tip wherever you are just sort of look around, like, what are the students doing for you? Um, or, you know, how do you see other people interacting in a way that you can copy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, exactly. what is the cultural norm? How to fit <laughs> you know? in. Yeah. So, yeah, like, if, if, if you see people 
bringing in little gifts or whatever, or snacks or coffees. And yeah, that's something that you can adopt Mm -hmm. and make your own life better. Do you have any advice for someone who's thinking about teaching in Korea? So maybe just some advice about like getting jobs or what kind of jobs or applying for jobs, any of that stuff. Dave's ESL Cafe, obviously, that's always like the the first place. There's also lots of uh, lots of schools advertise on Facebook in different Facebook groups. So if you just do a search on Facebook for ESL teaching groups in Korea. Uh, You can join these groups and people will post their job ads. But I would say uh, do your research, but also keep in mind that Korea has insane libel laws. Like it is libel, even if it's true, (laughs) Yes, it it damages a reputation. So, you know, um, Joe that I used to do a podcast with, um, He was successfully sued by his boss because he wrote on his blog that he didn't get paid. He owed him 7 million won. And because he wrote that, even though it was true, uh, he had to pay her 3 million won in damages. Whatever you see on the internet, have to take with a grain of salt. This sounds so cynical, but consider what the person who is giving you a good report might have to gain. Like, for example, my first job, the person who hired me was the foreign teacher that I was replacing. And she was so glowing about how awesome the school was and how great they would, you know, how great everything would be. The apartment was great. The job was great. The training, great. Everything was great, 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 great. Surprise, surprise. She was breaking contract and they were not going to pay her airfare home unless she found a replacement. Ugh, yeah, there's so, so many situations like that. I think. Welcome, sucker, <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, well, one tip I have kind of related to that is like most um, cities in Korea have like a Facebook group for the local expat teachers. So um, yeah, just like find it, like Suwon English teachers or Chonan ESL teachers or like whatever, or Chonan community or something like that. And then find that on Facebook and then, um, just ask the question like, hey, I'm thinking about ABC Hagwon. Um, has, does anyone know anything? And you, that that's a good source of kind of unbiased information because it won't necessarily be the current teacher. It'll be someone with a friend who got ripped off or like a fort or like a teacher yes. who's moved on from that to like a better place or whatever. So there'll be less kind of like, yeah, vested interest in <laughs> recommending something that's not good. So that that's a good source generally. Yes. And I would say really do your research. You know, if, if you are offered a job, look at where it is. Like you can look at the Wikipedia page. You can look on Google earth and see, you know, oh, it's a little tiny village in the middle of nowhere. That's going to take me like five hours to get to Seoul or whatever. And if that's what you like, then great. But if you know that every weekend you're going to want to go to Seoul or Busan or a bigger city for that sort of livelier experience, then, you know, take that into consideration and find out all that you can. Like, it looks like a lot of jobs these days are only offering housing allowance. And you need to really be aware that that housing allowance is really, really, really unlikely to cover your rent. Mm. Um, even if you're just getting a one room or, you know, an efficiency, a studio, whatever you want to call it. And in Korea, you often need a huge housing deposit of say like yes. $10,000 yeah. or, you know, 10 million won or whatever, 20 million, 50 million won. So it's like, it can cover your housing if you have ten thousand dollars but most English teachers don't so that's I a bit um, tricky. when when I did have my own place when I was at the elementary school I had my own place and so yeah it was a 10 million won deposit and uh 600,000 won a month and that was for a one bedroom it was one bedroom with a separate living room and a separate kitchen so it was actually a decent sized place. It was just in a really old house in like a student area, like a university area. Mm. 
So they were really surprised that I lived there by myself. Like, I guess they had had, I think four people living there before, yeah. um, which I can't even imagine. <laughs> my, my last year in, uh, or my last few years in Korea, I had this sweet apartment in Busan and it was in an older neighborhood. Um, it was right by my university. So I could like walk to school basically. Um, but yeah, it was like this big three bedroom apartment overlooking the Nakdong River and I paid yeah something like 10 million deposit and then 500,000 won a month which is about 500 USD and um, it was crazy I just like asked my I, the guy that I hired to help me um, find it I was like was there like a murder here or like what <laughs> is going on like why <laughs> this is so cheap anyway I just was like all right whatever I'm just gonna like not worry about it so um, right yeah it was great, I, I can't then, see the blood so it's okay <laughs> whatever, I guess they cleaned it up but and then I did Airbnb while I was there too so it like covered covered my rent so it was like oh a nice side gig going on because I had a three bedroom so it was like it was actually a huge place so it was actually that yeah, was perfect so I had like a lot of yeah. people from Europe different parts of Asia yeah it was like interesting and it was fun anything else that you'd like to mention um, <laughs> about your um experiences teaching in Korea or advice that you have or or anything anything like that I think um if you're gonna go to Korea first of all be aware that the market is really out there like people have realized that it's a good place to work and um it's really not at all in copy a master's degree required so you know, I still see people all the time posting, like, I don't have a bachelor's degree. I have a, you know, I have a two-year degree or, you know, can I get a job? You know, I just have a TEFL certificate. No, the answer is no. First of all, always no. <laughs> uh, you have to have a four-year degree. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, you have to have a bachelor's degree minimum, which is a four-year degree from the U.S. and like a three-year degree from the U.K., whatever. But a bachelor's is the minimum for a visa. But the, the market is so crowded these days that most schools or most reputable schools, most schools that have options of, you know, applicants are going to want some sort of TEFL qualification, um, if not also TEFL experience, if not also a master's degree. Mm -hmm. So just be aware that uh, it is not the situation that it was you know, 15 years ago. And I still see salaries. I, somebody posted on Facebook the other day that was um, eight hours a day, Monday to Friday, and the salary was lower than a job I had in 2004 for six hours a day. Yeah, my very first job was like 2.2 and were... million. And now the salary is 2.2 million <laughs> is like a decent salary these days, which is so crazy. <laughs> yeah, and they were offering, I wanna say it was something like housing allowance, <laughs> whatever, which um, in Seoul, like that m might get you half of a one room. <laughs> like you would be sharing a studio apartment with another person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, maybe we can do a future episode about like kind of up and coming um, places. I think kind of the glory days of Korea for being quite lucrative for English teachers are may maybe maybe done. I think there are some better places if you're serious I about think, saving money. But that's maybe yeah, a I topic think... for another episode. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Um, I but I agree. I think anybody who's hoping to um, finish their bachelor's degree in whatever subject and go there and pay off their student loans in a year or two. I think those days are done. All right. So that might be a good place to end, I think. So um, if you like our podcast, please um, leave a review, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, and we'll try to put out an episode, I think, every second Friday. So um, yeah, stay tuned for more to come. So um, Jennifer, where can people find you online? They can find me on a blog that I have not updated in a million <laughs> years but, um, at teachtravellearn.com. And I also have a YouTube channel that I occasionally update, which is also Teach Travel Learn. 
Okay, cool. And, and um, you, Jack, where can people find you? People can find me in lots of places, but I'm going to, um, <laughs> you can find me at eslactivity.org. And that's, and also, and then the podcast notes and episodes will be at eslactivity.org slash podcast is the plan. So um, yeah, find me there. And I'm also around Facebook and stuff, but you can find all the links to that on my website might be the easiest um, thing. And I also have a contact button there. So if you want to send me an email or say hello, I would love to hear from you. All right. So um, I think that's it. We'll see you in a couple of weeks, everybody. Thank see you, you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.